This uh, next gentleman that's going to be on the show tonight was on a show about uh, four or five weeks ago, and he did such a tremendous performance that right after the show, Tommy and I asked him if he would be so kind to come back and do our show again, and he consented, and we're very proud to have him again, Mr. Jackie Mason. How do you do? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's certainly a pleasure to see me in person. I'm on the wrong side. I got to be careful. I'm looking for the Jews. You want me to tell you the truth? I don't even care if people laugh or not. It's not important to me. I got enough money to last me the rest of my life. Unless I want to buy something. Then I'm That's my best joke, mister. Let's try this side again. You want me to tell you the truth? I'm very thrilled just to be here because I never expected to be a comedian. My family wanted me to be a rabbi. I couldn't figure it out because I got a brother that's a priest. <laughs> Next. <laughs> There's no place to turn for help. <laughs> I'll bet you thought I was really Jewish. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I'll tell you a true story. I made it up. I made it up. You see, when my family first came to this country from Italy, many years ago... <laughs> What do I need you? I'm a hit with this guy. You want me to tell you the truth? It's, to me, it's a thrill because this is a, uh, an atmosphere that's warm and responsive. And uh, 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 it's different than playing in a nightclub. In nightclubs, people get drunk all the time. I did a show last week in a nightclub where one guy got so drunk. In the middle of the show, you wouldn't believe it. Tried to take his pants off over his head. <laughs> and he made it. <laughs> Not that it bothers me, because in this business, we're covered for everything. You know that no matter what happens, I'm insured? Mister? <laughs> I told three jokes already. Can't you pick out something? Like <laughs> no matter what happens, I'm covered for it. Do you know that if I should be bitten by a giraffe? <laughs> Let's try this side. They never saw a Jew before. Right? <laughs> Do you know? What do you know? You don't know nothing. If I should be bitten by a giraffe, I collect twelve seventy a month for the rest of my life. And the only thing is that I have to be pregnant at the time. And so does the giraffe. And that's not easy. I tried it. You hear? Who am I talking to here? You know, this is an amazing thing because I never expected it. Listen to this. Are you busy? I'll tell you the whole story. I think I finished with that guy. I never expected... This is interesting. Not to him. But this is the only business where it really requires so much stamina, so much talent, and so much experience to be a hit. You can go into politics, know nothing about it, and make a fortune. This is the only business in the world. If you want to run the country, you don't have to know anything. Did you know that? You don't have to have one minute's experience. Did you know that? Did you know anything at all that I'm talking about? <laughs> I got the stiffs right in the front. Can't you sit in the front? <laughs> Oh, that happens to be the truth. Do you know if you wanted to be a plumber, you need experience. But if you want to be a governor, you don't have to. Do you know what I'm talking about? If you wanted to hire a guy to work in your bathroom, you would say to him right away, which bathroom were you in last week? Were you having a bathroom before? How did you do? Let's see the bathroom. I want to see how you fixed it. Then you go looking for the bathroom to find out how he did it. And you hang around that bathroom a couple hours to see if he did a good job. Did job. Mister, don't you know what I'm talking about? But if he wanted to be a congressman, he would need no experience. Did you know that? There's no qualifications to become a congressman. You don't have to prove anything. You don't have to accomplish anything. Nobody has to judge you on any basis to be a congressman. Don't you know anything by yourself? <laughs> well, this happens to be the truth. A football player has to have experience. He has to graduate college to become a football player. A congressman doesn't. That's why we have such great football players and such bad congressmen. <laughs> Do you understand that? Not that I want to pick on any of our congressmen or on our governors, like a man like Ronald Reagan. I respect him tremendously. I do. The fact that he don't know what he's doing is not important. <laughs> but the truth is, the truth is, I have the highest respect for him. Anybody who could know nothing and hold a job is a fantastic person. <laughs> That's not nice to say he happens to be a great governor. But... 
and he knows what he's doing. The people didn't know what they were doing when they voted. <laughs> I'm kidding you. I made a couple of enemies there. <laughs> because I don't want to pick on him. Because the truth of the matter is, it's a great democratic process that can elect a man like this. Who is? <laughs> but, <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Well, how did he get the job? Not that I'm picking on him. I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> but it's symbolic of something that here's a man had to prove. I don't know where the time is. <laughs> Just when I think I'm doing good there, I lose there. <laughs> it's symbolic. Anybody who wants to see? It's symbolic. <laughs> I feel like I'm surrounded by Arabs. <laughs> He's surrounded. <laughs> He's looking at me like Hitler at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> it's symbolic. Who am I talking to? It's your closest. <laughs> but you're stupid. <laughs> it's symbolic of something that a man has to prove nothing in order to get the job. Isn't that important to you, Mr. Nothing bothers you at all? <laughs> well, not that I'm picking a man. We can take a man like George Murphy. God bless him. He happens to be a wonderful person. And he's doing a great job wherever it is that he's doing. Well, this is the truth. But as a dancer, he had 20 years' experience, couldn't get a job as a dancer. So he was standing in the unemployment office. He said, what do you want? He said, I want to be a dancer. They said, I've got nothing for dancers. Would you like to be a senator? He says, oh, <laughs> That's how Ronald Reagan became a governor. On Death Valley days, they wouldn't even let him in the picture. <laughs> With 20 years' experience, he couldn't get a job. He was sitting in the house doing nothing. What would you like to be? A governor. Go ahead. We'll take a chance. <laughs> Do you understand this? Mister, if you're bad enough as an actor or a dancer, you become any... One more show like this, I'm a president. <laughs> Not that I'm picking on the government. This is the greatest government in the history of the world. And we ought to thank the Lord that we even live in a country like this. How many countries without a guy in your condition sit right in the front? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's right, and I love this country. And I would do anything in the world for this country. I just came back from Vietnam. Though I wasn't fighting, but I came there. I went there to see what's going on. Because I don't believe everything the country tells me. As great as a patriot as I am, and even though I'm willing to give my life for my country at any time, I have to be careful to watch them. That's what makes the democratic process. Because they told me we have to be in Vietnam to protect ourselves here, because if we don't stop them there, they'll come here. You believe they'll come here from there? They're 12,000 miles from here. Is this the next stop? There's 300 countries between us and them. Maybe they'll stop in Belgium. Belgium isn't afraid. Maybe they'll go to Sweden over there. There's action, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and Sweden isn't afraid. They said, let them come. We'll talk it over. They don't care. We're nervous. You think they really got the money to come here? We got enough money and power to go to the moon. They ain't got enough cash to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> How are they going to get here? Are you stupid? I'm asking you a question. If they wanted to come here, why would they come from Vietnam 12,000 miles away? They would come from Cuba. It's a block and a half from Miami Beach. <laughs> and in Miami Beach, they could take it over in a second because everybody's laying in the sun. They got no time to fight. They're going to fight with China in the middle of the night. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? The ironic thing is, is that all the other democratic countries, instead of being on our side, is either neutral or even helping them. Do you know that Canada is sending goods and material to North Vietnam? I say, I got a good way to get even. Forget about North Vietnam. Let's attack Canada. <laughs> That's right. This way you have an easy war. Don't do so hot to come back for lunch. You start out again. <laughs> and at least if you win, you're in a nice neighborhood. <laughs> you got somebody to talk? You understand this? You understand what I'm talking about? How would they come here? Where are they going to land? It takes 22 hours to land in Kennedy. By that time, the war will be over. <laughs> There's no place for them to go in New York. If they get lost in Central Park, they got guerrilla fighters there, they'll wipe them out. <laughs> Do you understand? I'm making an issue of it because I happen to believe that we're not told the truth about everything. <laughs> what am I jumping about? <laughs> they tell me every day that we knocked out 12 bridges in North Vietnam. Every day. By the time a week is up, we knock out 87 bridges every week in North Vietnam. I was there. I found out there's only three bridges in the whole country. <laughs> how do we find so many bridges to knock out? Mister, don't you know anything? I'll tell you how they work it out. Every day, they send B-52s over North Vietnam, and they drop bridges. <laughs> then they knock out the bridges that we drop. <laughs> All right, get on. These are my best jokes, and they're looking. I don't want to mix in politics. I don't know if you notice that. 
because a lot of people resent it if a comedian starts mixing in politics. It's not my field. I should know who I am. <laughs> and the truth of the matter is, I don't know that much about politics that I should make myself an authority. I think everybody should know his place and appreciate the significance of his job and don't try to be everything. And it's not my place to discuss politics. Get out. <laughs> That's right. I know who I am. I didn't always know. My psychiatrist told me. That's right, I went to a psychiatrist. I'm not ashamed to admit it. You know, most people, if they go to a doctor, they're proud. They'll tell you everything that happened in that doctor's office. Did you ever notice that? But they have to go to a psychiatrist, they're ashamed to admit it. Why are they so ashamed of it? They're so ashamed because we still mentally have problems about mental problems. What, what was I talking about? <laughs> people can't accept the fact that they're inadequate mentally. If they're inadequate physically, they're proud of it. But if they have a mental problem, they can't admit it to themselves. The first sign of mental health is to know how sick you are. I'm talking to you, mister. <laughs> Never be ashamed if you need help. I went to psychiatrist for that problem because I didn't know who I was. I was so sick I didn't even know that I didn't know who I was. <laughs> Soon as I walked into his office, he took one look at me, he said, this is not you. <laughs> I said, this is not me, then who is it? He says, I don't know either. I said, then what do I need you for? He said, because I'm here to find out who you are. He said, together we're gonna look for the real you. I said, if I don't know who I am, how will I know who to look for? And even if I find me, how will I know if it's me? Besides, if I want to look for me, what do I need, him? I can look myself. Or I can take my friends, we know where I was. Besides, I said to myself, what if I find the real me and I find that he's even worse than me? What do I need, him? I don't make enough for myself, I need a partner. Ten years ago, I've been glad to look for anybody. Now I'm doing good. Why should I look for him? He needs help, let him look for me. He said, the search for the real you will have to continue. That'll be $25, please. I said to myself, this is not the real me. Why should I give him the $25? I'll look for the real me. Let him give him the $25. But if I find the real me, he don't think it's white $25. Then I'm stuck my money with the real him. I said to myself, for all I know, the real me might be going to a different psychiatrist altogether. I'd even be a psychiatrist himself. I said, wouldn't it be funny if you're the real me and you owe me $25? I said, I'll tell you what, I'll charge you $10. We'll call it even. I found out who I am. This is not even me. You know who I really am. I think it. <laughs> I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm keeping this show on such a high level. You notice that? I'm not like some comedians that come out and talk about sex in public and things like that. I don't even mention sex. You notice that? Come on. That's right. Everybody else just thinks that a form of entertainment in order to be popular is to be in somehow in some way either vulgar or dirty. There is no place that you could see a clean show today. Every kind of entertainment is either vulgar or filthy. This is why I do this show, because I want to be in a place where they keep a clean show on a high level, where they don't talk about sex that much, because there's more important things than sex. Could you think of something? <laughs> I would rather stand here and talk about music and things like that. Don't you think music is more important than sex for a man in your condition? <laughs> you want me to tell you the truth? I always thought that music was more important. I always did. To me, music was always more important, but then I started to notice that if I don't hear a concert for a year and a half, it don't bother. <laughs> Well, let's be honest about it. You ever see anybody get up five o'clock in the morning to hear a concert? You ever see a guy call up his best friend and say, hello, Sam, have I got a concert for you? You ever see a guy go into a strange town and say to a taxi driver, listen, you know there's a hot concert? You ever see a guy give a bellhop a hundred dollars and say, here, send up a concert? You ever see a house detective bang on a door and holler, get that concert up! Do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> then why don't you sit with him? Keep all the <laughs> because there's a great significance in this. You know what the significance is? Look who I picked out. <laughs> there's great significance. The significance is this, that we have to understand what is morality. You got that so far? What is poignant and what is impoignant? It's not the idea that sex itself is dirty. If you're a moral person, Look who I picked out. <laughs> if you're a moral person, then sex is not dirty. Sex is only dirty if you're an adulterous human being. Anybody that would commit adultery is a filthy person. Get out. <laughs> well, that bothers me. That does bother me. You know how much adultery is being committed in this country right now by this guy alone? <laughs> 
I read the statistics on this subject. Did you read about it? Did you ever read anything? Tell the truth. I read the statistics. Do you know that 50% of the married men cheat in America? That's right. The rest of them cheat in Europe. Right? <laughs> Did you know about this? I read the Kinsey Report. I couldn't believe what's going on in this country. I really couldn't. I mean, I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know the whole thing. <laughs> This is not only true among men, even among women. He wrote that among women right now, one out of three. <laughs> one out of three. Same thing like the men. Ever since I read that, whenever I see three girls together, I always wonder, which is the one? <laughs> Just my luck all my life, I'm eating the wrong two. No. <laughs> Next time. You gotta do more walking than talking. <laughs> the reason I brought this up is because I would like to get to see all of you live a clean life and a moral life. And to forget about sex and things like that. Because promiscuity is the way to an abysmal life, fraught with danger and misery. Maybe a little fun, but it's also. Because <laughs> living a moral life is more important than everything. You gotta write that down? <laughs> Remember to live a clean and a moral life. To elevate the significance and the beauty and the truth of life is to elevate the whole significance and the beauty of sex itself. Because those who truly believe in it, those who truly elevate it, could never be dirty. Because sex is life itself. You got that? Well, let's be honest. Without sex, would you be here? <laughs> I think you would. <laughs> That's not nice to say I was talking to you, but I was thinking about this guy. <laughs> because people don't know what morality is anymore in this country. They don't know what morality is. Who's clean and who's dirty? Who understands what the difference is? Do you understand that? Nobody knows. Mister. <laughs> to you, a person like him is a clean person. That's because you are a dirty person yourself. Because <laughs> you was a clean person, you would see what a dirty person he is. You understand that? We don't know what's clean. What's clean is fidelity. That's what's clean. Honor, integrity. Not whether you're wearing a lot of clothes or a little clothes. That's not important. We make so much an issue about a woman wearing a shorter skirt or a topless this. That means nothing. Why is the human body the only body on this earth that has to wear clothes? Who says the human body is so ugly that you're not allowed to look at it? Or that by looking at it is somehow shameful or vulgar? Why? We are all in the image of God, even this guy. <laughs> so why should we think of the body as a dirty thing? Why are we the only people who have to walk around clothes? The whole animal kingdom walks around without clothes. They're allowed and we're not. You ever see a chicken with a pair of pants? <laughs> Why, why is a horse, a horse is allowed to walk around in the nude, and you're not? Do you understand this? Do you look worse than a horse? Let me take a better look at you. The human body is nothing to be ashamed of, as long as you live a moral life. Do you understand that, mister? It's amazing, because I went to a nudist colony only a couple of weeks ago. You look familiar. <laughs> And I noticed that they're not ashamed of who they are or what they are. You got that? Just live a moral life and talk only in clean terms like I do. That's right, I never told a dirty joke in my life because according to my religion, it's a sin to tell a dirty joke. It's the same sin as the sin of eating bread on Passover. Did you know that? I made it up. <laughs> I made that up, but I'll tell you something which is true. Did you know that the sin of eating bread on Passover is actually comparable to the sin of adultery? No matter what your religion is, you ought to remember that. It'll make you a much better person. If you remember that adultery and bread on Passover are comparable to each other. I told this to a friend of mine. He told me that he tried them both. <laughs> and he can't see the comparison. <laughs> and they can't see the joke. Well, <laughs> you understand what I'm trying to figure out? Understand? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really have to leave you because I do have another show in July. <laughs> and even that one isn't definite. Incidentally, if you'd like to see me on the Smothers Brothers show again next month, write to them, tell them about it. <laughs> because I'd like to see it too. I have to leave you now because I, have to, I took a day off from my regular business just to be here. This is not my regular business, I'm a builder. You know what I recently built? An 11 foot pole. <laughs> It's in case I meet a girl that I can't touch with a 10-foot. <laughs>